The inner product allows us to define a new type of operator that acts on a vector to produce a scalar. It's usually denoted like this. And this is a rather intuitive notation because when this operator acts on a vector, it produces the inner product of those two vectors, which as a reminder is a number. So when this operator acts on a general linear combination of two vectors, it's the same thing as if it just acted on each vector individually because the inner product is linear in the first argument. We can extend this idea to define a linear transformation using the inner product. This is called a projection operator, and I'll talk about why it's called that later on. So the way this is usually denoted is we use the same notation as for that previous operator, that is the left-hand part of the inner product notation, and then to the left of that we put that same vector. And this is also an incredibly intuitive notation because what this operator does is it takes the number produced by the previous operator and it uses that as a scaling factor for the vector v. So this projection operator acting on the vector u is going to be the vector v scaled by the inner product of v and u, which is again a number. And so if this projection operator acts on a general linear combination of two vectors, it's the same thing as if it were to act on each of these vectors individually and then we sum the results. Um, and that's because that previous operator we talked about has this property of linearity because the inner product is linear in the first argument. And so this just verifies that this projection operator is indeed a proper linear transformation. So let's look at why this is called a projection operator. We use the same vector space we talked about last time, that two-dimensional space over the complex numbers with basis vectors zero and one. Let's consider uh, a vector in that space that's going to be the sum of these two basis vectors. We'll call it u. I want to look at the effect of applying two different projections to u. The first one will just be the projection formed from the basis vector one. And when we apply this to u, we can apply it to each of the basis vectors in the expansion of u individually because this is a linear transformation. And the result of taking the inner product of 1 and 0 is going to be 0 because the vectors 1 and 0 are orthogonal. And the result of the inner product of 1 with itself is going to be 1 because 1 is a normalized vector. So the end result of applying this projection to the vector u is just the vector 1. So what this operator has done is it's taken the component of u that's along the basis vector 1 and it's projected it out. That's why this is called a projection. Maybe it'll be more clear if you think about this graphically. So imagine we place some light source off to the right and we shine it onto the vector u such that it forms a shadow along this vertical piece here. Um, the shadow it forms is the result of applying the projection operator onto u. That's why it's called a projection. I think that's actually originally how it got its name probably hundreds of years ago. Um, so let's see if this holds up if we take the projection operator formed from the basis vector 0 and apply it to u. And we can do the same thing except this time the inner product between 0 and 1 is going to be 0 and the inner product between 0 and 0 is going to be 1 because 0 is also normalized. And this time we're taking that result and using it as a scalar for the basis vector 0. So then result is just the basis vector 0. So this time we've taken the component of u that's along the basis vector 0 and we've selected it out. And this would be the same thing as if we were to take a light source and place it above you, shine it down on you, and look at the shadow it forms on the horizontal axis. So these projection operators are taking some arbitrary vector in this two-dimensional space 
and they're projecting it onto a single vector. So they're reducing the space from two dimensions to one dimension. So considering this last projection, the one formed from the basis vector zero, any vector that this transformation produces is going to be a scalar multiple of the vector zero. That's how it's defined. We form some scalar by taking the inner product of zero and some other vector, and then using that scalar as a multiplier of the basis vector zero. So any vector that this transformation produces, it's going to be a scalar multiple of zero, which means that all the vectors produced by this linear transformation lie in a one dimensional vector space spanned by the basis vector zero. So this projection operator is reducing the dimension of the vector space from two to one. And in general, projection operators do this. This is also true of shadows. If you shine a light on some three-dimensional object and look at the shadow it forms on the wall, you took a three-dimensional object and you've created a two-dimensional representation of it, namely its shadow on the wall.